What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Dion and you're watching Reptiliatus. If you're new here, I make videos about specialty pets such as reptiles, amphibians, and different kinds of cool invertebrates. So if that's something you're interested in learning about, definitely consider subscribing down below and dinging the little notification bell afterwards so you don't miss any of my future uploads. Friends, if you love snakes, you're gonna wanna stick around for this video. Snakes are incredible reptiles. What if I told you there was a species that basically has a horn on its head and as such was given the name Rhinoceros Rat Snake? And what if I told you that if you missed my last video, you wouldn't know that I recently picked up a pair, male and female, of neonate Rhinoceros Rat Snakes. Friends, today we're going over how I'm setting up and keeping my new pair of Goniosoma bulangeri, the rhinoceros rat snakes from Vietnam. Ashley of Northern Lights Reptile Imports, thank you again so much for these animals. Now I do wanna be very clear on one thing, this is not a care video or comprehensive care guide. Yes, I take full responsibility in ensuring that the information I'm putting out on the internet is accurate, but I'm not at a point in my ownership of keeping these animals where I feel confident or competent that I can provide you all with a care video on how to keep these animals. So this is me sharing my experience based on the research I've done, based on the advice I've been given by the seller on how to keep the animals. And I'm gonna tell you everything I know about them. Take it like that, if you will. Now, under normal circumstances, I always make sure that my enclosures are set up for the animals before they arrive. However, there was a weird delay with shipping and things, so I was waiting for these enclosures to get here. So, not to worry too much, they stayed in their deli cup an extra day, and now we're transferring them into the new enclosures. All right, friends, so here are some of the items we're gonna be using to set these little guys up. They're very small, so for now, they're going into eight by eight by 12 inch tall Exoterra Nano terrariums. They're all getting a larger deep water dish because if you don't already know, rhino rat snakes love to swim. They love to soak, but it's very important that you keep their water dishes clean. This is also going to serve as a feeding station because at the size they're at, they're still eating fish, except for the male supposedly haven't taken a pinky. We have some fake plants here to put on one side of the enclosure. Again, they're not very big, so we don't wanna take up too much space. And then we have some sandblasted manzanita wood, which will also go in for climbing. I'm going to be placing a Terra Sky light over the enclosure. And then we have some sticky tack here, which will be used to block off any gaps in the top. You'll see later and make sure that our snakes do not escape. Now, again, we just got back from the expo yesterday. So you can see here that these lovely animals are quite tiny, very small, very small little snakes. Uh, so this is gonna be a good amount of space. They're slow growing, but uh, we'll have a closer look at them when we place them into the new enclosures. Uh, that's the female there and the male is here. He's marked on top of the head, actually marked him so I can distinguish the two. Let me know some uh, awesome name suggestions in the comment section if you have any. I was thinking maybe Pinocchio for the male. I thought that'd be kind of humorous. So maybe think of a, a good name for the female. Let's start by setting up these enclosures. All right, everybody, we're gonna take a quick break from setting up this enclosure to thank today's video sponsor, Into the AM. Into the AM is an online clothing brand that specializes in creating unique graphic designs. What I love about the designs is that they always incorporate nature somehow. There's sci-fi vibes, animals, plants, you name it, really vibrant designs. And what's super cool is that you're not just wearing an art piece on your clothing, the clothing itself is super comfortable. I can wear a nice large like this. It fits me slim, it doesn't fit huge. And on top of this, it's a stretchable, breathable, soft and comfortable material. I got a lot of shirts from them. I really enjoy it. Right now, Into the AM is doing a Black Friday blowout, which starts today. If you head to their website, you can save anywhere from 30 to 80% off on all products. Not only this, if you use my code down below, you can save an additional 10% off. You got from the 18th to the 25th to get onto intotheam.com, shop the whole website for 30% off and get that additional 10% off discount using my code listed down below in the video description and the pinned comment. Thank you again to Into the AM for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back to setting up those Rhino Rat Snake enclosures. All right, everybody. So the first thing we're gonna do is get these enclosures set up. So I'm going to move some of the branches. Let's get our enclosures unpacked here. Take our plastic wrap off and then we'll go from there. 
And so the next thing I wanted to do is put up the Terra Sky light unit here. So this is gonna sit on top of both of the enclosures, uh, just like so. I guess we'll see when it's actually on. But this way, they have some bright light, and hopefully those LEDs give off a tiny little bit of heat. These animals don't like to be kept very hot. They prefer to sit around 78 degrees Fahrenheit and no warmer than that. So no basking light or anything like that for them, especially not at this age. When they're larger, I might try having a small little, you know, 25, 40 watt light in a huge enclosure they can get away from it from. But at this tiny size, no supplemental heating. It's just too risky for them. But yeah, let's try turning that on and then we'll start setting up the enclosures. All right, so. Perfect. Okay, I kind of like it. Yeah, so it looks better if it's positioned closer to the front. Awesome. All right guys, so as mentioned before, the next step we're gonna take is to block off any passageway in the back slots that are designed for cords to run into the enclosures. There is a provided slot to close those off, but without wanting to take any risks of the animal pushing the slot to the left to escape, we're going to block the opening and the space for sliding the slot. And we're going to do this using the sticky tack I mentioned purchasing at the start of the video. Once this is set in place, it won't go anywhere. And if you ever do wanna remove it, it just pulls out so easily as well. So it's the best thing to use. Alternatively, people will stick silicone in there, but that doesn't come out as easily. So sticky tack is a better option. Now, for the sake of simplicity, I've decided to not go with a full bioactive live plant style enclosure. Again, these animals are very young and I just wanna focus on having their needs met in a simple, clean way. However, we're gonna use a nice soil blend here. It does even contain some isopods. And I think this will also do a good job of maintaining sufficient humidity for the animals. All that's left to do now is fill up the second enclosure with substrate and we're set to start scaping them with manzanita wood. This stuff is beautiful and it'll provide these arboreal snakes with climbing opportunities. When setting up the branches, I wanna make sure that one side has easy flow and access to be able to remove the water dish without tipping water into the substrate. We want it to be able to come in and out smooth and easy without anything being in the way or obstructing it. Lastly, we're going to add some jungle plant foliage to provide a sense of security and shelter for the snakes. Not only this, it provides additional surface area for droplets of water to form and rest on for the snakes to drink from besides the water dish. So all in all, a very important step and addition to the scape. All that's left to do now is set up the second enclosure and we can have a look at the snakes and introduce them to their new homes. Rhinoceros rat snakes have little horns on their faces. Really interesting. I'm sure at some point we're gonna learn that this provides some sort of sensory function for the animals. Who really knows? So for today's question of the day, I'd like to ask you all, what is one of your favorite or most unique looking snakes? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, I'll give your comment a heart and we can engage in a little bit of a conversation. Thanks. I unfortunately made the discovery that a battery blew up and destroyed my label maker. So instead we're gonna be using paint markers. Normally I use these to leave notes for my pet sitter when I go away on expeditions or other work related trips, but today we're gonna to use it to mark the enclosure so that we know which enclosure houses the female and which enclosure houses the male and we don't get them mixed up. Here we have some feeder guppies, which unfortunately are going to be placed in each water dish because as I mentioned, these are neonate snakes and rhino rat snakes usually eat fish for some time and have to be switched over to pinky mice. We'll talk about how to do that in an upcoming video as I learn about it myself, getting these animals to accept rodents. All right, let's have a closer look at each animal as we remove them from the container and place them into their new enclosures. This here is the female. If you take a close look, you can see she's a little bit lighter in coloration. And funny enough, the horn seems a bit longer and is slightly crooked. 
I'm not sure if that's going to correct itself over time, but nonetheless, it adds some character and does no harm to her well-being. Watching this young snake move into her enclosure, you can see how well equipped they are for an arboreal lifestyle as she effortlessly glides into the arboreal foliage. Do keep in mind that rhino rat snakes start off this color, but as they age, they become a brilliant green. You'll see eventually. You can see that she's making her way straight up to that corner where those slots were. And again, it's just a good thing that we added that extra security there with the sticky tack. No chance of her getting out. As she continues to explore her new terrarium, I made sure to set her dish up with a guppy in case she gets hungry later. And that's about it. We're gonna leave her be so that she doesn't get stressed at all. Let her settle in for a few days. Next, we have my male. As you recall, Ashley marked him with a small black dot on his head to distinguish him. That'll come off next shed. He is looking sweet. I will say, I'm thinking Pinocchio. Still seems like a good name suggestion. Let me know what you think in the comments. I gave him a feeder guppy as well. And now it's time to have him go into his enclosure. It's certainly quite fascinating watching these animals explore every single inch of their new terrarium. I'm sure their senses are tingling and they're eager to explore and feel the whole place out, but watching it happen is really neat. Although I've had the pleasure of working with various arboreal species, I've never owned them myself, so this is quite interesting. Oh, she got a little bit of dirt in her face there. <laughs> Pretty funny. Like I said before, as things progress and the animals settle in, I'm really looking forward to sharing more content with you all. All right, everybody, there you have it. I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching today's video. I'm so excited to have these incredible animals in my care. There's supposed to be at four snakes too, which is really crazy. Never really thought I'd have this many snakes. I love the animals, but I don't know, I'm really a lizard guy. Well, that being said, I do have a lot of frogs too. More on that in another video. But, alas, I digress as always. Thank you again for watching. I can't wait to give you guys updates on these animals. Next order of business, we'll be getting them to stick to rodents. And then once they're old enough, you know, we'll increase things to birds and other things to vary up the diet. But that's gonna be the most tricky thing, getting them onto pinkies. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you missed that expo video and you wanna take a look at me picking them up and everything, check out the video up above for my last expo video. And I look forward to seeing you all in another video again soon. Take care everyone, have an awesome weekend, bye.